Welcome in to College Football Now by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. Happy to have you with us. Today's show is sponsored by Mint Mobile. Plans starting on America's largest 5G network for just $15 a month. Start saving today at mintmobile.com slash chat sports. The Colorado Buffaloes have decided to fire head coach Carl Doral after a tenure that was not so great. 43-42, and 42, started off the season 0-5. He did win Pac-12 Coach of the Year back in 2020, but things were clearly headed in the wrong direction for the Car- Colorado Buffaloes here in 2022. Look, it was year three, and the expectations, as you could imagine, were expected to go up a bit for this program. And for them to be headed the opposite direction altogether, this was an easy decision from the Colorado administration to make a coaching change. Look, they've made some good hires in the past. Remember, Mel Tucker was there not too long ago. So this athletic department, this program has seen success over the years. We know what Colorado did in the 90s. And you're not asking for the next head coach for this Colorado program to get back to the form of what they were doing years ago. That time has come and gone. If Colorado could just simply find a coach that can average between seven to nine wins a year, I think if you're the Buffaloes, you take that. You just want to be competitive at this point in time. And Colorado has not been competitive for a minute here with the way things went under Carl Doral's administration there at Colorado. Should Colorado have fired Carl Doral? I think so. I think this was an easy call to move on from him as their head coach. What say you? Let us know in the comments section. Type Y for yes, type in for no. In a minute, we're going to go over some popular coaching candidates to be the next head coach of the Buffaloes. But first, want to hear from you directly. Should Colorado have fired Doral? Let me know in the comments section. Y for yes, in for no. We begin with a familiar name to Colorado fans. Eric Bieniemy, the offensive coordinator of the Kansas City Chiefs. And Bieniemy's name came up last time for the Colorado head coaching job, but he wasn't very interested in the job previously. And it's been believed for the last several years that Bieniemy was on his way to being a NFL head coach, that he was going to get hired by somebody. But as time has passed, Bieniemy has not received a head coaching job. He's interviewed for several jobs over the years. His offenses in Kansas City have been terrific, but there have been some issues with Patrick Mahomes. Some We've seen some disagreements on the sidelines. There's questions about his past, of the DUI arrest that he had. But nonetheless, when it comes to an offensive mind, Eric Bieniemy is as good as anybody in football. And the name that he brings, the NFL pedigree, I know that you have some question marks potentially about him as a leader, but it would certainly be a splash hire, and it would excite Colorado fans if you bring Bienemy back home to Colorado. He's a name I would certainly keep in mind potentially for this job. So with that, should Colorado hire Eric Bienemy? Should they pull him away from the National Football League and become the head coach of the Colorado Buffaloes? What say you? Type H for hire. Type P for pass. Let me know in the comments section if you believe that the Buffalo should bring Eric Bieniemy home. What say you? H for hire, P for pass. Some more names for you. Troy Calhoun, the head coach at Air Force. They do run a triple option scheme, and that appears to kind of scare some programs from time to time when you run a triple option. But nonetheless, he's been very successful, and they have been a consistent team in the Mountain West Conference. And if Colorado's looking for a quick way to turn things around and try to win football games, compete for bowl games, running a triple option in the Pac-12 might be their answer to do so. Another name is Lance Leipold, probably the hottest name among coaches in college football right now. The Kansas Jayhawks have started off the season 5-0 and and are playing terrific football. And this is Leipold's first full season at KU. Last year, he was hired after spring practice had already occurred. He was using fall practices just to catch his guys up to speed. They went on to win two games last year and beat Texas. This year, they're 5-0, and and they have a top-20 ranking. College game day is coming to Lawrence this weekend for that KU-TCU matchup. One of the best stories in all of college football. The best story is what Lance Leipold is doing in Lawrence. If he can do that in Lawrence, imagine what he could do with more resources in 
Colorado with this Colorado program in Boulder, with their history of winning and tradition, recruiting-wise, would be very similar, potentially, of the players that he brought into Kansas. He could bring even more so to Colorado. But I have to imagine, Leipold's name is going to come up a lot. You're not just competing with Kansas for Lance Leipold. You'd be competing with other schools that want their chance at the Rock Chalk Jayhawk head coach. Today's show is sponsored by Met Mobile. Your service can switch seamlessly between 5G and 4G LTE, whichever one's strongest. If you're somewhere where the 5G is going to come in better, your phone's going to have 5G from Mint Mobile. If 4G is better, you'll have the 4G. Whatever works, depending on where you're at. You don't have to worry about turning on airplane mode or any of that. Mint Mobile's got you covered, and it's cheap, folks. You can start saving today. Look, we're trying to save every penny we can right now. And with Mint Mobile, why wouldn't you look at Mint? With plans starting at just $15 a month on America's largest 5G network, start saving today. Why wait around? MintMobile.com slash chat sports. Don't laugh, but Bill O'Brien, his name is being brought up for a lot of jobs in college football. Currently, Bill O'B is the OC at Alabama. And look, before the way things ended with the Texans, Bill O'Brien's name was right up there with some of the best in, in all of football, quite frankly. With the way things went at Penn State, with that program and the mess that he took over to turn that around, the Houston Texans, things were going really good, and then things went downhill after that uh, comeback that the Chiefs ended up beating the uh, Texans in that playoff game, and things haven't been the same since, since he took over his GM and everything, ended up getting fired. Well, now he's been in Alabama the last couple of years as O.C., the offense looks really good there. Have to think that Bill O'Brien, if you want to talk about somebody that has a track record of rebuilding something, he did that at Penn State with some very unusual circumstances he's a name to watch out for. Also, Kalani Sistek, the BYU head coach, is another name. He's done a really good job. BYU's moving into the Big 12 next year, and we know what BYU has resources-wise. It would be hard to pull him away from BYU, but have to think that his tracker, he, he knows the area, he would could be a very good fit for the Colorado Buffaloes if they're able to pry him away from BYU. Got five more names to get to here in just a moment. Let's begin with Brian Harson, the head coach at Auburn. And it is believed that Harson will be fired from Auburn sooner rather than later. That things are not going well. That has not been a good fit. But He had a decent tenure at Boise State and, of course, you know, played football there. So he knows the, you know, Mountain West region, you know, this this area of the country, the Rocky Mountain area and everything, and could be more of a fit there at Colorado as opposed to uh, at Auburn. And we know that he loves offense. Colorado fans, you want to see a high-powered offense, Harson could be your guy. Another name with regional ties is Bronco Mendenhall, the former Virginia and BYU head coach. Things were going good when he got there at at Virginia. He had success at BYU, but there's always been a limit to what he's been able to achieve. He kind of tops out at the jobs that he's been at. So a veteran name, somebody that is not your one, two, three, four, or five choice, but certainly deserves mentioning on the board. Tom Herman, the former head coach of the University of Texas, is available, and look, I know things didn't work out at Texas, but as much as we laugh at the University of Texas and how bad things have gone, his success was still better than the other coaches that have been there as of late at the University of Texas. Um, He was better than Charlie Strong, I can tell you that much. Um, He did a good job at the University of Houston. He did a good job as offensive coordinator at Ohio State, and Texas went to the Sugar Bowl when he was there. So, I'll say what you want about Tom Herman. And I have my personal frustrations with Tom Herman uh, as far as his character goes and the way that he treats his players and treats his opponents. But the guy's a winner, okay? I, I, I mean, he, he, he has won a decent amount of football games of the year. He's a great offensive mind. Maybe he could find himself in Boulder. A couple more names for you. Todd Munkin, the OC at Georgia. Munkin is somebody that, I'm surprised he's not a head coach already. With what he was able to do as an NFL offensive coordinator, former OC at Oklahoma State as well, and now with what he was able to do with that Georgia offense. Look, Stetson Bennett. Stetson Bennett, folks, 
has no reason to be playing at the level that he is right now. To be able to go out there and ball out as well as he's done, that's because of Todd Munkin, putting him in a position to succeed. He has gotten the most absolutely out of Stetson Bennett, and he works to his team's strengths. If they need to run the football, he'll run the football. If they want to air it out all day, Todd Munkin's offenses will air it out all day. I like Todd Munkin. He deserves to be a head coach. And then there's Dan Mullen. Dan Mullen, former head coach at Florida as well as Mississippi State. Now a whole lot of ties to the Pac-12 and to Colorado, but nonetheless a big name that was successful at Mississippi State. Things did not end well at Florida, but he was in the Cotton Bowl just a couple of years ago. So there's your list of candidates for the Colorado head coaching job. Before we go, who should be Colorado's next head coach? It's your turn to weigh in. Whether it's one of the ten names we mentioned or somebody else, you tell me in the com- in the comments section who should be the next head coach of the Colorado Buffaloes. We'll continue to follow this coaching search as well as other coaching searches and the latest news happening in college football, news, rumors, hot boards, and more. It's all in one place right here. College Football Now by Chat Sports. Subscribe today, and we'll see you next time here on the channel.